Hello everyone and welcome to this bad coffee break tutorial. In this video we're going to go over how you can take a server that you've built in GameMaker and run it on hardware that has no display whatsoever. I use this technique specifically for my Raspberry Pi and running servers that I've written on a Raspberry Pi uh, that's sitting in my desk drawer just connected to an ethernet cable and power. But you could use it for something like uh, with a dedicated server that is hosted somewhere else in the world entirely. Now this tutorial is very specific to running your server on Linux. It should be transferable to a few other platforms that GameMaker supports, but nonetheless it'll be pretty short and sweet and hopefully you get some information about some functions that you might not know about. Alright, so with that let's jump right in and check out how to make this all work. So over here in GameMaker I've set up an example that goes through the two most important functions that we're going to be using to make this work. So this is stuff that you would take and you would apply to the server that you've built in GameMaker. So the first and I would say the most important thing that we're going to be doing is we're actually disabling the draw event. So in the manual they reference this as a, a headless mode itself and in Windows it, it really kind of does play out that way and I'll show you that in a moment. But what we're doing is we're saying draw enable draw event and we're saying false. And this function call kind of works differently on different operating systems. So for example in Windows we'll see in a minute that uh, absolutely no window shows up once you've called, made this call. Whereas on Linux, a window still does show up, but there's nothing inside of it. Then for the purpose of this example, we're just setting a string uh, to hello, I am still alive, to kind of echo out that the server is still running or that this application is still running even though we can't see it. Then down here, we're just uh, setting up the intervals for when it should be displaying that message to the user. So we set interval to five, and all that means is that it'll print that out every five seconds and then last time equals zero. So if we go over to the step event, we can actually see what we're doing, and this is where the second important function comes in. We're essentially checking that the interval time has surpassed the current time of the game. Um, so we take last time and we add it to interval time times a thousand uh, and make sure that it's uh, less than the current time. And if that case is met, then it will actually print out our string to the terminal or to the debug file. And we do that by using a function called show debug message. And you might be familiar with this function. What's really cool about it is because on Linux, the way that uh, applications interface with the terminal environment, or in our case, the command line interface, the show debug message actually prints out to the screen the message that we're sending. So show debug message and disabling the draw event are the two most crucial parts of what we need to do in GameMaker to prepare servers to go into a headless environment. And we can actually take a look at what this does here in GameMaker um, by pressing the run button. Uh, we're unfortunately not going to see a lot, but let's take a look. So now the main loop has been entered, the application is running, and you can actually see down here, I'll make this a little bit bigger, uh, that every five seconds it is printing out, hello, I am still alive with the current time of the game. Um, so that's the number of milliseconds that have passed since the game started. You'll also notice down here on the taskbar that absolutely nothing is showing up. And that's because we have that draw event disabled and, and how that works exactly with Windows. If we take a look in our task manager, we can see that the GameMaker Studio 2 runner is running um, and it's using 12.8 megabytes of memory. And this is very similar to what you would see if you were to create an executable and fire it off on Windows. So I'm going to build this example for my Raspberry Pi. YoYo -Yo Games has a fantastic example with a URL in the description of this video um, for how to set up your GameMaker exports for Linux. That also includes information for how to set up your Raspberry Pi. Um, I do have a more in-depth guide that I posted on Reddit that I have down below in the description as well. So once you actually build your executable for your server, you'll end up with the files that are necessary to run it on your local machine. We can actually take a peek inside of this right now. So we have our executable file, and we have the assets, including the game data, and all that sort of good stuff. And now we need to move it over to our server. So I'll just be using FileZilla to transfer the files over to my server through FTP. So I'm actually just going to extract it right to my desktop because it's really easy to move complete folders over with FileZilla. Obnoxious transfer file noise complete. And we can see that now over on our remote server, um, we do have the executable and the assets folder. So once we have our executable transferred over to the server, we're going to get putty. 
and PuTTY is a free SSH client that essentially allows you to interact with the command line interface of your remote server. So then through PuTTY we can connect to our server. I'm just going to connect to my Raspberry Pi. And then here we are. So essentially this is what you would see if you were on the terminal on your Raspberry Pi or on your Linux distribution. But in this case we have no monitor connected to the Raspberry Pi. It's actually running in command line interface. So we can go check to see that the files transferred successfully. And they are there under headless RPI. So I'll browse to that directory. And once we get in there, uh, we can see that we have a folder called assets and then we have a file called headless, which is our executable. And with Linux distributions, we do need to mark the executable as executable. So to do that is really easy. We're just going to use chmod plus x and then the name of the file. And then now that file is executable on the system. So now this is where things get a little bit hacky. In most cases with remote applications, we would be able to just launch the application right now and it would work. And so I'll, I'll show you what happens. So we're about to launch headless and you can see that the Yayo Games Linux runner started, um, that it loaded game.unx and eventually it says cannot open X display. So X server is the service that actually allows for things to be put on your screen visually when you're looking at it through a display. And the Yo-Yo Games runner and compiler both have a dependency for X display to be running on Linux. Now, I have put a feature request in to Yo-Yo Games to see if this is something that we can manually disable in the future if we want to. And there are some recent hints that maybe this is coming through the inclusion of a headless flag that you would apply to your exe file which currently exists but just crashes the, the game maker game but for now we have to do this all in a roundabout way and so that's really what this video is about showing you how to accomplish that so the main piece of the workaround that we're using is called xvfb which is the x virtual frame buffer and it's essentially a really small system that virtualizes the x server environment my experience was that XVFB was pre-installed on Raspberry Pi OS. This might not be the same for you depending on what distribution that you're using, but it's pretty easy to install. All you would do is in your PuTTY instance, you would just type sudo apt-get install XVFB. That install process might be a little bit different depending on what distribution you're using, so you would want to be familiar with installing applications. As you can see, we already have XVFB installed on this system. So let's see what we can do with XVFB. So we're just going to type xvfb-run and then we're going to select the headless file and now everything is working properly and you see we start echoing out the hello I am still alive. So there's our first sign that everything is working well. Uh, our application from GameMaker running on a headless server in my desk. But there's still one major caveat that we'll go over, and that is that what we're seeing here on PuTTY, uh, this terminal instance, if we were to exit it, the application would also end running. Which you can imagine is a huge problem if you are running on Windows and you tell your server to start and then you shut down your computer for the night, which you should always do. So I will exit this PuTTY instance and we'll fire up a new one and we're going to reconnect to my server. And now we're going to talk about screen. So screen is an application that we can use to essentially organize our terminal instances into, you can imagine them as windows. It should be pre-installed in pretty much any Linux distribution, but if you don't have it, you can install it the same way that we talked about installing XVFB. So to start up screen, usually you would just type screen. In this case, we're just going to give it a session name. So we'll call this uh, game maker server. And so now you'll have a blank prompt um, so you're now inside of the screen session. So now that we're inside of the new screen instance, we're just going to go back to the directory where our executable is. And then we'll use XVFB to start up the executable. So now we have our main loop running on a headless server and we can actually exit out of this if we'd like to. Yeah, we wanna close this session. And we'll relaunch PuTTY and we'll reconnect to the session. So we can see what's currently running by typing screen ls and we see that we have 715 game maker server and that it's currently detached and what that means is that we're not looking at it currently here. It's really easy to reattach to that screen and see what's going on. Um, we can just type screen r 
And if you have multiple instances of screen running, you'll want to type the number ID afterwards. But for our purpose right now, we can just do screen dash R. And we can see that the server has still been running in the background, telling us it's still alive every five seconds. So in your case, you would want to make sure that the debug information that's being sent out is relevant to what your server is doing, if there are connections or disconnections. With GameMaker Networking, the connections and disconnections list are usually echoed out automatically thanks to how the runner works. But by using the debug messages, it's really easy to display information uh, in real time that you would want to see if you had an actual window open. But that's really it. There are a lot of possible use cases with this. I know a lot of people have looked for this information for a while or have been curious about it. When I'm building a server in GameMaker, uh, I usually include a flag that I can check via the parameters that the program has started with that tells the game to go headless. And so that would enable the debug messages and disable the draw event. And that allows you to still be able to use it in a graphic environment. So if you have a Linux server running, you can still open it up and have all of the goodies and switches that you want. You know, and I'd say the biggest downfall of this is that you can't uh, easily interact with the server in any way, um, at least without restarting it. But you could definitely build a system that maybe dynamically loads configuration files uh, every few seconds to check if there are any changes, and that would be a good way to be able to change settings uh, on the fly. But again, I, you know, I hope this information helps you out, and uh, hopefully we'll get a true headless mode in GameMaker soon. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next week.